Catholic News Roundup is brought to you in part by PewSitter.com, your online Catholic newspaper for the third millennium. CatholicMediaCoalition.org, in line with the church, online with the world. And TheAmericanCatholic.com, politics and culture from a Catholic perspective. Hello and welcome to today's edition of Catholic News Roundup. I'm Matthew McAuliffe. Pernicious Pepsi policy. Shareholders are putting up a fight against Pepsi's contract to use the stem cell lines of aborted babies for flavor research, going as far as asking for help from the Security Exchange Commission. You may remember that PepsiCo signed a four-year, $30 million contract with research company Cenemix late in 2010 to use embryonic kidney cells to research flavor enhancers. Cenemix and PepsiCo's unresponsive attitudes resulted in a boycott of Pep PepsiCo in seven countries through the work of over two dozen pro-life organizations. The shareholder who filled the res filed the resolution with the SEC is specifically asking for a corporate policy that respects human rights by not using parts of dead babies for research, while Children of God for Life calls for moral sensibilities that recognize how such, quote, research affects stock values, retirement pensions, and investments. Documents destroyed. Re records needed to prosecute Planned Parenthood in Kansas have mysteriously disappeared, causing a delay in the criminal court proceedings. You may remember that America's abortion giant faces 107 criminal charges involving late-term and botched abortions in the state, and now, as it turns out, the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, or the KDHE, has destroyed the very records needed for the case. Planned Parenthood's attorneys are claiming the disappearance of the files is due to what they are calling, quote, routine purging of documents by the agency. The executive director of Kansas for Life, Mary Kay Culp, said in a press release, quote, only guilty people destroy evidence. Not even we anticipated former Kansas Governor Sebelius and her administration could stoop this low to protect abortion industry criminality, but this proves they did, end quote. You can read the full article on our resource page by click clicking the link right over here. The latest CUA lawsuit. More changes are now being filed against Catholic University of America by the same man who initiated the lawsuit attacking the university's right to have separate dorms for guys and girls. John Banzaf, professor of public interest law at George Washington University, filed his first lawsuit against Catholic U this past summer, claiming the dorm initiative meant to cut down on drinking and fornication on campus was a violation of the D.C. Human Rights Act. His latest lawsuit, which he also filed with the District of Columbia Office of Human Rights, says the college illegally discriminates against Muslims by not providing them a private space of their own for the many prayers they must make during the day. This latest threat of legal action comes even though the campus paper quotes the head of an Arab group on campus who says he feels free to openly practice his Muslim religion because the community is very respectful. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a few seconds. Catholic News Roundup is brought to you in part by NewOxfordReview.org, the voice of Catholic Orthodoxy in print and on the web. and. RenewAmerica.com, expanding the influence of America's grassroots in the cause of freedom. Homosexual hate crime. The violent actions of homosexual activist vandals in Chicago include throwing bricks and hate speech, directing both forms of hatred at supporters of true marriage. RealCatholicTV.com recently reported an attack on a fundraising dinner held by the group Americans for the Truth About Homosexuality, or AFTA at Christian Liberty Academy, during which brick, bricks with threats written on them were thrown through several windows. Peter LaBarbera, founder of AFTA, tells OneNewsNow.com that he got a statement from Bob Schwartz, the co-leader of the Gay Liberation Network, suspected as responsible for the attack, which says, quote, I did not and will not condemn the actions of persons who threw the brick pavers, assuming that they did so out of hatred of Lively La Barbara and the Christian Liberty Academy, end quote. La Barbara describes the group as a Marxist homosexual direct action group. Shocking gay play. 
a new play in Hartford, Connecticut, that seeks to expose children to homosexual situations they may be uncomfortable with is being forced on kids even behind the backs of parents. The play, called Xana Don't, is about a reverse world in which homosexuality is the norm and it is taboo to be heterosexual, where the high school chess star is in love with the outcast football captain who is secretly a closet heterosexual. According to Peter Wolfgang of the Family Rights Institute of Connecticut, school officials only vaguely warned of a scene of homosexual affection that turned out to be two men passionately kissing on stage, resulting in some kids screaming in the auditorium. A local paper, the Hartford Current, quotes local principal David Chambers as saying, quote, the reaction by the students of disgust was a good sign. I'm Matthew McAuliffe. Thanks for tuning in today. Be sure and tune in tomorrow for your daily dose of Catholic News Roundup right here on realcatholictv.com. And be sure to check out The Vortex today, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to tell all your friends about us. And as always, God bless you.